A key hearing in the Oxford school shooting case that will determine whether the killer will receive a life sentence without possibility of parole. It was chilling, it was heartbreaking, and it was a hard day in court for survivors and family members as they relived the horrifying days of that event. We want to warn you, some of this testimony is very disturbing. Let's get right to Fox News' Charlie Langton. He was in the courtroom. He joins us live with more. Charlie, tell us what happened inside. Go. <laughs> All right, listen, it's a little hard to hear out here right now in front of the Oakland County Circuit Courthouse uh, where the Miller hearing started. The Miller hearing to determine how much time in prison Ethan Cromley, the Oxford High School shooter, will get. After day one, it seems that there's two strategies going on here. The prosecutor wants Ethan Cromley to do life in prison without parole. And so she's talking about the crime itself and how brutal and planned that that crime was. While the defense attorney is crying and trying to make the argument that Ethan Crumley, only 15 years old, he just didn't really know what he was doing. Now, the most damaging testimony, something that we have not heard before, was a recording, a video recording, although we only heard the audio part, uh, portion of it today, made by Ethan Crumley himself. It was just like he was in the courtroom testifying. And what the audio said half was just I don't know, for lack of a better word, it was chilling. He basically said that he was mentally depressed. This is Ethan Crumley's own words, that he was brain, being brainwashed by the government in schools, but he had a plan to kind of rectify all that, that he would put a bullet in the skull of as many people that he could hit at Oxford High School. And his, he, say, he said he had demons that he was hearing, and he would use a 9 millimeter gun, that he would flee the school, and at the end of the recording he said, sorry, mom and dad. You're going to hear portions of that right now. You're also going to hear from a teacher that testified who was shot on that day. And then finally, a detective who basically is trying to put this whole case together. Take a look. I'm going to open fire on everyone in that hallway. The hallways are too jam-packed. I will try and hit as many people as I can. I will reload and I will find people hiding. I'm going to teach them a lesson. You know, I'm sorry that their families have to go through this, but it's for the right of humanity. I had um, sent my husband a text message um, that just said, I love you, active shooter. Okay. Did oh. he respond? He did. Um, what did he say if you remember? He said, just get safe. And what did you say? I didn't respond okay. to that. Um, that was about the time that I realized uh, that I was bleeding. I could feel blood on my arm. I remember seeing kids just standing around like they, like they looked like zombies almost, like they didn't know. And they were telling us to get everybody inside, and I remember putting my hand on a couple kids, like trying to direct them, like, come on in, trying to be sensitive to the traumatic event they just went through. Um, I didn't want to force anybody, and I put my arm on, my hand on a couple people, and they just stood there, they didn't move. I tell you, let me just say something. Let me just say something about the people in the audience. There are a lot of victims in the in the courtroom today. Uh, basically, when a lot of the testimony was playing, you could just hear the the cries. There was a lot of sh tears shed. As far as Ethan Crumley, he basically sat at the council table, pretty much with his head down, really not saying anything to his attorneys, to anybody else at all. He had one hand free. He was in shackles, and that's the way he's going to attend the hearing. It really does seem to me that this is going to boil down. To whether the crime is going to outweigh the factors to send him away to life in prison, or when the defense presents its case, that'll be tomorrow, to try to somehow mitigate the fact that he was just 15 years old and whether or not his youth, did he really know what he was doing? But after today, it's going to be a tough call. Judge said he's going to issue a written opinion. That's what he'll do. He will call us all into court, but the decision will not come tomorrow. It will probably come within the next few weeks or so. An amazing hearing, both legally and emotionally. I'm live out in front of the Oakland County Courthouse. I'll send it back to you guys. You have to feel for those people who have to live through that all over oh, again yeah. when they took the stand. Just awful. Thanks, Charlie. Well, more than 148,000 still without power tonight after those thunderstorms. The Fox 2 drone giving us a glimpse at some of the damage in Gross Point.
DTE says it has thousands of crews out in the field, but that's little comfort to those with no power, especially in this hot weather. Yeah, we're talking uh, about a lot of people out there who are dealing with 90 plus degree weather. Fox News Hillary Golson joins us live in Livonia with more on the cleanup on a very hot day. Hillary. Yeah, it is incredibly hot right now, and actually that number is 167,000 people who have no power as a result of the storm, but actually DTE sometimes has to interrupt power to be able to restore in certain areas. So if you lost power, then got power back and lost it again, that's why. Now you might see that I'm standing down uh, certainly below elevation. That's because of this. You can see it, right? This is an entire tree that's on someone's house. I'm about six feet, so uh, it's far above me. This is the issue that DTE has been battling with. They've got these old trees all across Metro Detroit uh, in the southeast and southwest portions of our viewing area in which large trees are not just falling down on top of people's homes, but they're also bringing down power lines. So that makes their job so much more difficult. Now, a lot of people are having to deal with two issues at once. In fact, the homeowner coming back now as we talk about his circumstance, one that unfortunately is not unique to him. In fact, it's pretty much ubiquitous. I heard crack and then bam, it fell. You know, um, I, I was supposed to sit down in the living room and watch television, and I finally know what it was, so I ran in the basement thinking, you know, the worst. This is what it was. And then part of it's on my truck, too, and then I can't get my car out the garage either. I was like, whatever, you know, and then when people start telling me, and it made a whole lot of sense, they done cut the roots up that hold the tree down. Martin Chambers' Livonia home pretty bad. Badly damaged to say the least. It almost got me killed. Wow. And you were actually close to where the tree fell. Exactly. What do you attribute your luck, your incredible luck to? I ain't no luck. It's God doing that for me. We were traversing through other parts of Livonia and Redford. This is near Five Mile and Beach Daily. Uprooted trees down power lines. A similar story written by Mother Nature's wrath. We're seeing trees down both in front lot, rear lot of homes. Uh, we've seen trees that have knocked one tree falling over from outside of our right away that's knocked down four to five poles. We dealt with severe weather events, those wind gusts around 70 miles per hour, heavy rain. The southwest and southeast regions of our area hit the worst. Here's a look from the air in Gross Point, not far from Gross Point Boulevard. Tree trucks felling dumpsters, poles snapped. You know the deal. Number one, things can be replaced, people cannot. Exactly. Exactly. Right. That's why I say, you know, hey, I'm blessed to be here, right? Hey, hurt, no wounds, no, not in the hospital, not in the morgue. <laughs> you know? You're right here with us. <laughs> right. DTE says its storm response team is more than 3,000 strong as they prepare for another possible bout of severe weather. And as you mentioned, adding to the severe weather is, of course, the heat. We are standing right in it. It is very hot out here, especially when the sun is beaming down on you. And you have to do the very difficult work of not just sometimes cutting through these very large trees, but also, of course, repairing the electricity. Now, here's another thing to note. If you have down power lines, the DTE says they have thousands across Metro Detroit. Stay back. Stay back about 25 feet. The most important thing is to call 911, call DTE. That's about a school bus length. It is incredibly dangerous. And Sadly, we have seen some tragedies. Now, coming up at 6 o'clock tonight, we speak to a woman who is dealing with not just diabetes and other ailments, but is an amputee and is stuck inside of her home in Redford with no power. So a lot of people are dealing with this as a nuisance, as an inconvenience, but for so many, it actually affects their lives. So we're going to bring you that story and, of course, any updates from DTE. For now, we're live in Livonia. I'm Hillary Golston, Fox 2 News. Thanks, Hillary. It's one thing to say, hey, you know, I got to throw out the stuff in my fridge and kind of suffer through a couple of hot days. But when you're dealing with medical issues, people returning yes. from surgery, all kinds of things. The elderly things. Yeah, it's they tough. They need the help. Well, let's hope they get those lights on soon. As you just saw, several areas of our area of Metro Detroit, I should say, affected by Wednesday's storms. Yes, and now there's another chance for storms in the forecast. Weather Authority, Rich Luderman here now with what? More on what we can expect, Rich. Uh, Taryn Roop, it could be another round of active weather tomorrow. Right now, it is all quiet. It's 
warm, it's muggy. 84 for us, 86 in Lansing, 86 out there in Grand Rapids. Take a look at live pictures from Mount Clemens. 81 degrees, just a bit cooler near the water, but the humidity is up, and that humidity is not going away. That's our forecast for tonight. Mild and muggy down to 70 degrees. Tomorrow, we're going to be closer to 90 with additional storm chances Friday and Friday night, but the weekend ahead, much more comfortable. We're going to show you that seven-day Rupin Taran coming up in 10. Thanks, Branch. Well, tonight, an update on a crime that took place more than four years ago. A local pastor, a man of God, pleading guilty to murdering a transgender woman. Fox News' Amy Lang spoke with her family. I was glad. I just wanted to hear him admit it. Jessica Williams lost her child to murder in December of 2018. Now, four and a half years later, Pastor Albert Weathers of Sterling Heights has pleaded guilty to killing 36-year-old Kelly Stow, a transgender woman leaving her body in the street near McNichols and Brush in Detroit, an area known for prostitution. Did you say a prayer with her before you left her out in the street like trash? You know, did you just at least hold her hand and tell you sorry? Kelly's family wants the world to know she wasn't some castaway. She was very much loved. It has been heart-wrenching. Yeah, Kelly was my first grandchild, and we had a bond, a serious, tight bond. I don't want her to be what society may have a picture of, of trans women of color. You know, they're not throwaways. They're not people who people have forgotten. You know, they, they all have a backstory, and I think that's something that needs to be realized. She was cared for. She, she was loved. Born Tristan Stow, he was raised in the church, grew to be six foot four, got a scholarship and played college football, but left after a couple of years instead, wanting a career in fashion. I personally told her to be the best version of herself that she could be, own it, um, <laughs> just live your life and be happy. In school in Chicago, Tristan studied fashion and found a community of authenticity and eventually told her family she was transgender. People called her Kelly. I was glad for her. I was proud of her to, to own who she was and to be her true self. Why the pastor shot Kelly Stow in the early morning hours of December 7th, 2018, we may never know. But Kelly's family hopes Pastor Albert Weathers tries to make things right. He's facing eight years in prison for second degree murder and two years for felony firearm. How tortured are you to lead such a duplicitous life? And to the point that you were willing to cover up what you did mm. by taking this line. Mm. How dare you? Clearly, he's attracted to that population. Mm -hmm. So own it. Mm -hmm. Own it and maybe change your life. Kelly's family grateful to the Wayne County prosecutor and Wayne County victim advocate for the transgender community, Julissa Abad, for sticking with the case that was finally about to go to trial on Monday. I am glad that there was a conviction. Um, justice was finally served. You just don't know the lives that people live, and it goes again to the social stigma that my community experiences, particularly trans women of color. Women like Kelly Stow, whose lives matter. My sister never wavered in her commitment to her child um, as a person first. And that's what I would encourage families to do, look beyond the social stigmas. Stick by your kid, you know, stand with them. You know, you had them, they're yours, and support them. In Detroit, Amy Lang, Fox 2 News.